All right, this is using checkboxes as radio buttons. There are actually two ways to do this. Today, we're using a for loop. In a following video, we're going to use the properties service to accomplish the same thing. So here's the sheet I already have set up. And I have my checkboxes, I have my options, and I have the instructions of here to please select one. So what I want to have happen here is that someone can select R5D4, and then if they go and select IG11, that this checkbox will automatically undo or automatically uncheck itself. Obviously, that's not what happened right now, right? I can check this, I can check this, right? They work as independent checkboxes. And that's how checkboxes are designed. There is no specific radio button option. So we're going to be taking the checkboxes that Google Sheets has provided us and then adding some functionality to turn those into functional radio buttons. So let's go open the script and get that working. Now, obviously, we want this to trigger whenever we do something, whenever we edit. So we are going to be using the on edit trigger. Since we do need to pass it a range, we are using the E variable. Therefore, do not run this function manually. That won't work. It has to have this E variable. So, and that E variable is created, or this E parameter is created by the edit and by the trigger running automatically. If you try to run this once we got it, have it set up, it'll just fail. So don't try to run it manually. Make sure you run it just from the edit. That's great. So first thing first, I want to make sure it only runs when I'm editing this range. So we're going to do if dot column start not equal to two. Or e dot range dot row start equals one, right? If we change something up here, if we change what the police like one says, or start row start greater than eight, right? So if we're editing something down here, and finally, or e dot value not equal to true. And this is how we make sure it only runs when we actually check the box. Otherwise, it'll work when we check it and when we uncheck it. All right, so if any of those happen, then return, quit out. Now for this version, I need to get the entire range and then we're going to loop over the range of the checkboxes. We're gonna call this twice. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable R sheet and then get the range. The range I want here is row two, column two, right? We're at column B, so column two. And I have seven, you can see down here, I have seven checkboxes. I have seven columns, that this, seven rows this is covering. So row two, column two, seven rows. And I'm not actually going to get the values there. I'm going to get them in another variable checks. And that's because at the end, we're going to need to call this range again and push the values out. So it's easier to just have that range sitting by itself so that we can call it for in and out. Best practice, access your sheets as few times as possible. So I'm going to do a single r.get values. Instead of looping over the values in the sheet, I'm going to get all of the values first and then loop through them. And then we're going to do that right here. I in checks. So loop over everything in the checks variable. If checks i zero. So if whatever is at the first row and the first column of that row. You guys remember the way that JavaScript and App Script and Google Sheets deal with these kind of arrays. They are always two dimensional arrays. So we loop through the rows in this first index and then the columns in the second index. So 
if checks equals true and and here we want to make sure that we do not reset the value where we edit it so plus i you need to do the plus i because i in this case isn't actually a number right now it's it represents a number but um, we would have had to do for let i equals zero i is less than checks dot length right we have to go through a lot more to get there so i like this notation let i in checks but that means right here when i want to access it as a number i just need to say plus i so that it forces it into a number and if that is not equal to e dot range dot row start so where we edited and here we actually need to do a minus two no actually and that's because the JavaScript array, the checks, is zero index. So the first time it wrote, so the first index here is zero, right? So it's using this So these are the indexes that I is looping over. Okay? But obviously the rows are this is what the rows look like okay so i have javascript from zero to six rows from two to eight so because i need to match those up i'm saying the row of the edit minus two that's what's going on there so if the check if if the value in the checks array is true so if it is already checked and our current index is not equal to some math hack to be where the edit occurred. Then checks i0 equals false. Okay, so here we're comparing using the two equal signs. Here we are setting. Okay, so if the value is true and we are not looking at the index where the edit occurred, then set the value to false, okay? And once that's done, let's just do r.set values. And this is why I made an r variable instead of just getting the values to begin with. I wanna call that range again and set it to checks. That's it, okay? So as always, we make sure we made an edit at the correct place here we get the range of all of the checkboxes. Here, we get the values of all of those checkboxes, whether they're true or false. Here, we loop through all of the checkboxes, and if the value is true and it is not the value we just edited, set it to false. And right here, it's setting the array value to false. So here we're setting the range values to the array values. Let's give it a try. So I'm gonna choose R5D4 and it shouldn't do anything, right? Because we only have one checkbox, but now I want four long. And it automatically unchecked that one. AP5, IG88, IG11, 21B, now at this point, whatever I check is going to uncheck whatever was there. So that is acting as a radio button rather than a standard checkbox. And obviously it is constrained. So if I edit down here, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, so that's it for this. We loop through everything. We make sure if anything is, is checked that we uncheck it and we make sure that we don't uncheck the value we just checked. I hope this is valuable to you. Please like, subscribe, share and of course you can always reach me at my email in the comments on twitter on linkedin uh anything i can do to help you out that's great